All right, all right, all right, and welcome back to another exciting episode of the Planet Gen X podcast. I'm Sean, that over there is Brian, and by God, we're happy to see you today. It's been a What's long... What's up, man? How's your week been? Ah, uh, well, it's it's been a very quick week. I was about to say it's yeah. been a long week, and I was lying to you all because it wasn't. It was a very quick week. Um, I, I was surprised that it was Friday already. Um, yeah, it came quick for me too yeah and, and and honestly there wasn't really a lot going on this week uh that is to say there was a major thing going on this week that i maybe that was the anticipation anyway before we get into that please hit that subscribe button there you click go. a like do a comment My man. whatever 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 right so yeah, yeah the biggest thing obviously this week was spacex finally got to the third test flight of Starship, which um, I got to say, man, I'm disappointed in the legacy media. Not that that is any surprise. Um, it, it's just really sad what they're up to, man. But uh, a, 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 the mission ultimately was a success. It was a great right. success, especially if you compare it to the first two. Um, but they, they, first of all, they're just totally glossing over the fact they're like, I know one headline I saw said, Oh, SpaceX loses contact with the starship, blah, blah, blah. You know, it's like motherfuckers. They put this in space. Finally, for the first time, the biggest rocket ever made finally made it into space. Did a, it wasn't a full orbit. I don't think it might've done an orbit, but, uh, it was in space for a while. And then it came back for reentry. They lost it. Almost, I mean, it was damn near close to landing. Yeah. And obviously, the, you know, they have never um, done it at this speed. They have landed Starship before, but they've only gone, gone so far. It's never gone actually into space and reentered. That's why this was such a big deal. So there's lessons to be learned. Maybe they have to throw tiles on the whole thing or just further around it, you know. Who knows what happened? But if, if you watched it, all the way through, you can see, man, the cameras and everything. It's just getting bombarded with plasma, and it's apparently very hot. So, you know, if a tile goes bad, it could be something as simple as that. So maybe they do need to re rethink how they adhere to their tiles, if that's what it is. You know, there's all kinds of things. But the most important thing that these guys are missing out on is that the data they collected from this mission is invaluable. And, it's, right. again, it's it's way beyond what their their first listen from their first go to the second go it was a huge leap right they got the uh the new water system in they're not blowing apart the launch pad which has to take forever to be rebuilt that was a huge leap they got the rocket up there it didn't quite make it into space starship didn't third one comes around launch is perfect i mean i didn't see anything go wrong with the launch they get up there into space it does what it does the uh the rock the booster we don't know what happened they lost contact with it so yeah getting them back that's part of it they didn't get that far so that's going to be mission four i bet you anything they get past it yeah i believe you <laughs> yeah i mean it's, it's i don't know i i really didn't see much from uh like legacy or otherwise media media but i did see a lot of people commenting on it online that were impressed um, so, you know, I don't know I, I, what purpose is like media corp or corporate media serving us anymore. Right. Oh yeah. It's, it's, it's only about, about connecting mm -hmm. us. And if they can't connect us, uh, they're not really serving a purpose. Yeah. They're failing to do that. Do you know, um, they're, they're just not, I think I saw something today about CNN's numbers being like down negative 17 point six percent i think okay that's it was definitely negative 17 i just don't remember what the point was but uh <laughs> and again what the point of cnn is anymore um it, well, there's, there's, i don't know i my feeling there shouldn't be any news outside of like what c-span used to be like actual footage of news yeah shit. dude no doubt <laughs> like we have cameras everywhere let's just we'll we'll see what happens and make our own judgments you know yeah um but yeah, it's it's just unnecessary, man. They they should be. Uh, if you go back to the spirit of the the space program of the '60s, you know the media back then was all in, and you know everybody was all in. But in this, we, a lot, the people are backing him, but the the media is just not. 
uh, and the government obviously is through NASA in that part, but I think there's others in the government that would like to see him fail in a lot of ways, you know, not, not well, just mean, the rocket thing, but in general. Yeah. Back in the day, it was the, the space race. And the only thing that we got, you know, like ev everything else concerning space was Russia, Russia, Russia. Yeah. But we were the first one to get people with boots on the moon. That was our big thing. That's why it got, got so much attention because it was a big deal. And, you know, I guess that probably led us to, you know, kind of I don't, the narrative that we won the Cold War that I don't necessarily believe. And now everybody just, you know, wants to align with the money bags that are being thrown out Russia here, everywhere else. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. So, uh, <clears throat> Originally, when I was putting together the podcast, the notes for the podcast, I I uh, was like, "Damn, man, it's just not been a lot happening this week." You know, I've I managed to come up with a couple other things to talk about, but like, yeah, so that that was really kind of sucked up all the news. You know, uh, I've been looking forward to it all week and was wondering as we got closer to the fourteenth whether it was actually going to happen. I missed it live. I thought it was coming in, uh, going to happen at like six thirty evening time or seven o'clock somewhere around there but uh yeah i was i totally missed it I, had, I got home and i was like what the hell so i had to throw it up real quick and watch it man and, uh, i was kind of disappointed i missed the first time they go into space but it is what it is i still got to see it and... yeah i'm i'm sitting here thinking i know they've had late launches but you know usually that the the window for uh any extended test is a is a morning window yeah it does seem that way man i should have known better i just uh just wasn't thinking about it man i don't even know if i realized it was a lot you know it was the launch day that morning you know right. I, I think i totally for just drew a blank but whatever so congratulations to the spacex team to mr elon musk man i uh i made a comment on twitter yeah a day before it may have been yesterday that uh five years we're sending uh we're sending a craft to mars I believe that. Okay. I believe that. The The way they're iterating, man, I don't think that's a ridiculous claim. It'll be interesting to see how the Artemis program plays out with the uh, going back to the moon, because that's already getting pushed back a little bit. But uh, Right. Yeah, I mean, if it's all Elon, no government, I think the timelines can be very, very... Uh, oh, shit, what's the word I'm looking for? Um condensed yeah but just more uh you can be more hopeful but that's not the word i'm looking for but you know um with the with the government involved it's going to take a lot more time it's going to be yeah. you know you can't be it, it'll be stretched out something that should take five years will take 15 you know it seems like that that's a problem when you're dealing with the government and nasa in the rocket program, space program in general. We'll see, you know, the, the Space Force is, is uh, now a thing, so who knows where where who all this stuff know. will go. Yep. Indeed. Anyway, I'm just rambling at this point. <laughs> so It's all good. We're here to talk, right? <laughs> yeah. Last time you had mentioned to me, as we didn't get it on the, the show, you it was after we uh, two weeks ago, and you're like, yeah. and or two, and I said, yeah, I'm going to check into that. And then we went on the podcast last week, and you just mentioned it, and I'm like, holy shit, I totally forgot about even checking into that. Well, by God, I checked into it. I remembered to do it this time, because I came across what I thought was the and or two teaser trailer. Right. And it was very well put together, and I was very excited for Andor, and then I was very pissed off to find out that it was another fucking asshole that got me with one of these fucking trailers, these fake fucking trailers. Dude, they're so cool, these trailers. You all are excellent at your craft. I give you that. But you're fucking dicks, because you get my hopes they are, up. But, I mean, at the same time, that's got to be part of their portfolio when they're pitching their, you know, you have to put it out there and get the buzz and, and you can use that buzz as, as metrics, right? Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, I get it's it. It's understandable. Dude. It is an asshole thing to do, but yeah. mm. you get my hopes up. But exactly. Yeah. 
at least, uh, you know, at the, and the end of the trailer is like 2025. And I'm like, fuck, 2020. This is before I realized it was a fake trailer. I'm like, 2025. <laughs> and then, you know, I, I was like, okay, well, let's go do some research, see what we can find out. Because that was, uh, that was even like from a month or two ago, like back in January, that trailer was made. Yeah. So, so let's see what we can find out. And so the the only, the only really the thing that came up was a, an interview with uh, Stellan Skarsgård. Uh, of course, he's in the new Dune movie, the, which is out in theaters. The second part's out in theaters now. Um, he plays Baron Harkonnen in that. Uh, you'll remember. Seems him. like he's loving it too, man. I, I I saw him like in the makeup, like in the makeup on. It's it's a tedious process. It looks yeah. like, and it looks like it's a really heavy suit. It is, yeah. Um, but he does look like he's really enjoying it. And how can you not like that? Is one of those roles that I don't know if. If you can't enjoy it, you have no business be playing that, right? Well, no business being an actor, man, because yeah. that should be like the the role you want to sink your teeth into. And I don't know if he's watched the original movie or not to get you know to just know where where some actor have t has taken it. But uh, yeah, he's I I mean he's great for these roles. By the way, I mean we're talking yeah. you know uh, Pirates of the Caribbean. Uh, what is it the Bill. It's the second one with uh, yeah, is where he's the uh, well, he's in a couple of them, but the 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 first time you see him is is the one where he's playing uh, Will's dad, Bootstrap Bill. Yeah, Bootstrap Bill. It's really good. You know, yeah. I can go back to the first time I ever remember seeing him in anything was uh, the was the Glass House. I think it was called. Did you ever see that? Not ringing a bell. Yeah, uh, he kind of plays like a pedophile stepfather with his daughter it's got that girl that oh, she was she was a french girl and she kind of looked like a young um oh she looked like a young was it not holly hunter um anyway it's neither here nor there but it's a good if you want to see him in a very in an old back way back when the glass house or glass house because his name was glass and he actually built a glass house he was kind of like some kind of architect or whatever and um it's a good movie but, you know, yeah, it's a little creepy by, you know, it's like a Lolita type creepy. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. But Stellan is is a fantastic character actor. And I, and I was trying to think of, of other uh, memorable roles that he's done. But, uh, well, thank you. Well, obviously, uh, we're talking Andor, right? Mm -hmm. Andor 2 was the point of this, uh, the beginning of this. And yeah, we were sprinkling a little Gen X H ADHD in there for you, right? Um, <laughs> so he pl he plays a great character in Andor, and he the best the best news we've gotten, or the only news we've gotten, is from him. And from what he said, it's you know, and this is an actor working on it says that it, it's better. He feels like it's better than the first one, which. Right. Man, that's a that's a tall hurdle to get over because the first one is f fantastic, man. Just mm. well, you also have to look at it like what's the metric of that, right? Like your values might not be his values, yeah, right, right, yeah, no doubt. But who knows? Um, but it looks to be like that that fan made trailer might have been right that uh, you know Disney didn't have. Andor famously at the, in in December their schedule for 2024 they didn't have Andor on it Andor season two okay. so they had uh, you know the Bad Batch and and whatever uh, so that that raised a red flag with a lot of people so it looks of course, like that may be changed as well right because uh, there's been some shuffling concerning uh, Marvel movies um, there has been a little bit of issue with the X Men '97 stuff oh, their God. animation oh no yeah so well, who knows yeah so i mean it, it could make it could eke it out at the end of 2024 but it's probably going to be 2025 the more right. than likely um and the the, ugh, the dagger in the heart man he said it's going to be the final season right <clears throat> that this is going to take us right up to rogue one i don't like to hear that man because honestly this has been just the absolute pinnacle of star wars since the whole new episode seven time period onward well let me pitch it to you a different way would you rather sit here 
for like five seasons, like having them draw it out of like, uh, okay, no, how long can you draw this out? No, no, right? no, 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 I'm not asking for that. But I think, it, you know, I think three seasons is about good for any show. I really like to see three seasons. You start out and then your second season, you've got your footing under you. You can come at us with some good story. Then you tie it up in the third. Boom, you're done. Yeah. If it's super fucking popular, maybe we go a fourth and a fifth. If you're supernatural, we go 18 or 20, whatever it is. <laughs> you know, um, some of them you just can't quit. You know, yeah, they just they're just that damn good. Well, uh, I mean, there were a lot of winning factors for supernatural. So, I don't think we're done with it either. If you if you uh, keep up with those two at all and and catch them in any of their convention stuff, man, they they definitely want more. Right. I I I don't know if it'll just culminate into a movie, like a one-off movie, but they there will be more supernatural. I I feel confident in saying that. I can tell. I mean, any supernatural fan that, that just happens to cross paths with this video will probably back me up a hundred percent on that. Well, that's what I was gonna say. Is there there's still like. Anybody who was ever into Supernatural never got out of Supernatural, right? No, you just got tired of it because it got shoved down your throat by TNT or whatever it was on, uh, you know, just being played all the time. Um, yeah, or you, you've got some issue with, like, the the creators um, feeding back to the audience, right? Because the audience had all the fanfic right. thing about, yeah. like, all the gay stuff and whatever, yeah. and they would, they would pander to that. I think it's great. You know, you should pander to your audience on occasion. It wasn't made made like the whole thing, right? Yeah. Just occasionally throw something out at you and make you laugh. Well, there's a saying in the wrestling community, man, you know, how can I love you or how can I miss you if you won't go away? And that's where right. you see wrestlers <clears throat> just go away. Of course, a lot of times they're injured. But sometimes just to get, uh, whether it's a you know, heel or face change, they just go away for a couple months. Because they know yeah. if when they come back, they'll get a bigger pop, especially if they're coming back as baby face. Um, so it's the same thing for me with Supernatural. Now that it's been gone out of my life for a couple years, yeah, man, I could sit down. I don't know if I could convince my wife yet to do that because she got really bombarded with it. I think Dwayne might disagree with you a little bit on the wrestling thing. <laughs> yep. <laughs> what the rock? Yeah. Like, he's gotten a lot of hate, hasn't he? Yeah, dude. He's gone from, like, being, like, a real f fan favorite in wrestling to top heel Jones, number one, can't sell shit to anybody. Like, nobody wants, I mean, like, yeah, no, he he's just, he, he, okay, so he's he's on the board of TKO now, so, he, so he's, like, one of the bosses. He's put his daughter... Uh, in as a manager over at NXT, and his movies. Eh. Yeah, I, I hate to say it because it's a Disney movie, but I actually did like the Jungle Cruise. I thought it was very entertaining, and he was it was very funny at times. But I saw it. It was it was a Disney movie, <laughs> dude. Yeah. Considering what it is, like we we're, we're going to take the Jungle Cruise right? It's the same thing I thought back with Pirates of the Caribbean. At least the, you know it was amazing what they came up with. I thought they did the same thing with Jungle Cruise. Like, what can you fucking do with, you know, Jungle Cruise, you know? But yeah. they made the Jungle Cruise come in live into a movie, and I, I didn't hate it. There's other rock movies I don't hate, but there's a lot of them. They're just the same, man. They're like cookie-cutter rock movies, and there's a lot of them. I think, in my opinion, at least it was true for me, I was done with the rock when he was done with wrestling, like before he was done with that, because he came in as a heel, you know, he was a bad oh, guy. Yeah. In the beginning oh yeah. And dude, evolved to the people's him. champion. Right. Yeah. Uh, and probably midway through the people's champion stuff. I was like, okay, that that's, that's enough. <laughs> I, I was a big rock fan, man. You remember I used to like wear the sideburns and shit and, you know, um, that was just as a joke. I mean, like, I'm not that fanatical about The Rock. It was just a joke at the time. But uh, I did it when I watched wrestling back in the day when he was on. Yeah, I enjoyed it. When he came on, it was funny shit, man. He yeah. could, he had a way of delivering lines that were just one after the, one zinger after another. And it was good. 
and you feel like, damn, this, this motherfucker's pretty quick witted, and I can appreciate that. I like that kind of thing. You know, when you can come hit people that hard, you know, constantly, and, and even throwing some rhyming in there and shit, you know, yeah. That's why, that's why Snoop's the shit. Right. Snoop will just be talking to you and rhyming the whole fucking time <laughs> and having a conversation with you. That shit's fucking on point, dude. You consider how hard, I mean, like, he just does it now. Rhyming right. is a language to him. We got a little off the track. We, Dude, we're, we're coming so off, of, off the track. When I do the chapter for this, I'm like going to have to, yeah, it's, I don't even know, like, should I even pull it back in? Because I said everything we need to say. I mean, so. I think we said everything, but I was going to pivot to another Skarsgård. Yeah, Bill. yeah, his son, Mr. William Skarsgård. Yeah. Who we know lovingly from uh, True Blood. Right. It's Eric the Vampire, who uh, was one of my favorite characters of all time. And uh, then got into a little bit of character acting with it. Yeah. And, or was that his uh, brother? No, that was him, right? You know, I think I'm uh, messing us both to, up now. I'm trying to <laughs> I remember. I think it was him. He was in something we watched. God, I don't know. I can't remember what it was. He was in something we were watching not too long ago. Um, but go ahead. This is yours. Anyway, uh, they're remaking The Crow. Yeah. And... um. I don't know. It's really hard to uh, replace Brendan. Brandon Lee. Yeah. But. Um, and it's been done. I don't already. know. I think. I think he can do it. Yeah. I mean, I have. I have no doubt. Um, I love him. I mean, he's like we were talking about his father. He he's he's a damn good actor. So yeah. we'll just have to wait and see. I, I don't think I'll be, di be disappointed at all. And so there's there's Bill and there's Alexander, right? Shit. And I think you were thinking of Alexander Fuck. in True Blood. Yeah, right? I've got it all fucked up, man. Y'all are going to have to know. Okay. That's Jesus where we Christ. messed up. I, I, I was just trying to get it straight. It's all good, though. I mean, I've made mistakes all the time on this show. Damn, <laughs> dude. I forgot about his brother, man. Yeah. Yeah, strike that. All that stuff about him being on True Blood, not the same guy. But I do love yeah. that dude. Yeah, yeah, I mean, that's what I was saying. He, Alexander. Uh, he did great work as it, as Pennywise, right? Oh, okay, um, yeah. Frightened a number of people, and like all of his, his face work was just him, right? So... I'm just, I'm out, I'm like so fucking blown away right now that I'm like trying to get it all together. I never was much, I, I, the Crow movie was okay. Yeah. But I've never been a big Crow fan. Like, I've never just been dying to rewatch them or anything like that. Versus something like Blade, I would watch the shit out of those. So here's the thing with, with the Crow, uh, uh, we'll bring them both together the Crow and Blade. Uh, looking at them, they're both both based off of con comics. Um, not a huge fan of the Blade comic book character. It's kind of cheesy, yeah, in my opinion. Oh yeah, uh, kind of black exploitation y um, But uh, I would say one and two are great. Three, meh. Um, whereas the Crow had one great movie and all the rest sucked. Yes. But the, the, what I've seen of the, I never really read it, but I've seen a lot of this, uh, they're not called stills, but you know, the, the frames of artwork. Frames, yeah. Yeah. Uh, are great. Uh, the artwork, artwork was great. The story's great. Um, so the comic was good and it only had one good movie and hopefully this will be, I don't know, Another good feather in the cap for the crow. Hey, maybe it'll be better than the all than the original one was. Maybe quite possible. But yeah, very interesting. <clears throat> so the other major thing, most hmm. this is our big uh, Star Wars episode, I guess, because we're 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 heading back into Star Wars territory. The other major yeah. thing, the Battlefield original Battlefront. Let's say Battlefront. Battle. Battlefield. You said Battlefield. I said Battlefield, Battlefront. Yeah, the original Battlefront. One and two have been re-released in a compilation put together, and 
apparently it really sucks ass like it, no effort put into it at all um couple things like it's just very buggy I, I watched a couple videos of people just trying to use certain classes of characters and their weapons wouldn't work um interestingly the originals which you can still or at least you could still get uh i don't know if you still can but the two original games together were 11 gigabytes but this one's like weighing in at about 60 gigabytes right which it's not a remaster. It's not a remake. So where is all this extra data coming from? It's, you know, uh, there shouldn't be any new textures. The online play was really rough. They said there was three servers for all the people that were there to play, and you had to wait forever. Correct me if I'm wrong, but all of these were problems in Battlefront 2, weren't they? Maybe even one. I don't remember having any problems. Like, when I played these games back in the day, it was... It was all good. Plus, one thing were is... Were you early adopter? Did, or or did, did you wait? Oh, you talking about this new version? Out? No, uh, on the older versions. Did, were you, like, first on board with everybody else? Or did you wait a while once they were released? God, I don't remember, man. It was a long time ago. I just seem to recall there being similar issues uh, back in the day, but who knows? Yeah, I don't know. Um but yeah, I mean, it's not many servers to give anybody. Right. Especially if, you know, that's a, those games were huge, man. They have a huge following. I was excited for it. Um, and now I'm a little disappointed. I'm hoping they could, they'll get some patching out and take care of it. The biggest thing is, though, like if you have the old versions, you can mod those. Right. So you got the benefit of that. Whereas anything, you know, that was broken, like you say, probably was fixed somehow. And uh, now you got this, which if it was a, a remake or something that, you know, I could tolerate it being messed up because it's a different game, essentially. Yeah. But I don't know, man, it's not looking good. I hope they get uh, some decent patching out soon. I want to check it out. I loved Battlefront, both of them. It was okay. I think... Uh... At the time when I was messing around with it, I, I just had something else that I was more into at the point at that time. Well, this was still when I would first person shoot, and I wasn't, you know, getting out of it. This was on the heels of um, Tribes play, so I was down to do some, you know, multiplayer warfare like that. And yeah, it was but, I mean, Wars. it was it was better than you know Call of Duty or something like that, though, because you got to actually like if you were decent enough at it and you could get the points to upgrade your character you could play as these iconic characters from the franchises yeah no doubt yeah it was it was a lot of fun man yeah uh it was it was well made back then i mean like the the, the, the studio that put it together did a good job yeah i agree it was but uh it was ea wasn't it i think so can't remember been so long. <clears throat> and lastly, but not got leastly. a few more notes. But yeah, we we kind of uh, deserve to have have a little bit bit of our nerd card pulled, right? Yeah. Well, like I said, I knew about it, but yeah, I didn't have it on the list. Yeah, um, I didn't bring it up either. I I had seen it earlier uh, that day, I think. Um, but yeah, uh, Dragon Ball Z creator or Dragon Ball creator uh akira toriyama passed uh we didn't mention it um and i don't know there's been a lot of talk uh i i don't know how to how to feel about the the talk that's been thrown around of him being a great innovator um <clears throat> dragon ball was pretty good at dynamic frames because they, they had that classic uh you know small team japanese animation style which yeah. was you know a lot of reused frames a lot of it's back and forth yeah very minimalist um but it generally worked as far as the art style is concerned 
if you could just handle the story of being like the same thing over and over. <laughs> yeah, man. I mean, like this is, we were talking just before this and I, and I mentioned that I, you know, you know, I don't care that much for anime and, and Dragon Ball is a fine example of why I don't, um, first of all, I don't think it's ADHD friendly anime, but so many do. They, so many seem to make it through it, but for me, it's just, I don't know. It's not something I can deal with. And if you miss one episode, you're, you're fucked. You're not, not in Dragon Ball Z anyway. I don't know about no. original Dragon Ball. I really didn't watch it, but I remember watching Dragon Ball and it was like, you could literally miss an entire episode and you wouldn't miss anything. Yeah. Because well, it, there would be so much drawn up into the end and the beginning of the other two episodes that would just thread it right in. Yeah, it depends on how they were cut um, yeah. and how they were delivered here because you have some that were, like, it's it seemed like four, you know, like four episodes would equal 30 minutes or something in a show here. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like they were really small episodes or something like that or, or they were, they were, you know, 22 minute episodes like anything else with commercials, but they were just one of those stories like you're talking about where it was just so drawn out. Like there's maybe five lines in the whole thing and the rest is just two people staring at each other, getting ready for battle. That's <laughs> what right. I see in all the anime. Two people yeah. like shot person screaming, another shot, blah, 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 screaming back at him. Shot, shot. They're going back and forth. And the next thing you know, poof, they come together and they're locked in battle. You know? Every damn one of them has a little battle in it, it seems like. Yeah. And that's all the story is, like, going to the next battle. Let's go to the next battle. For What are you battling for? I haven't even heard what we're, what we're battling for. Is there a story behind this? Where'd you come from? Who are you? Yeah. yeah. I don't know. I don't know. We we did talk a little bit about some of the anime that we liked, and I, I, I brought up my, my kind of trinity. Uh, we agreed on um, Ghost in the Shell. Yeah, just I mean, like the it, way it, it looks. Well, it had all the corners. Like it, it, it had great animation, great art style, and it had an amazing story that was so drawn up into many, many things. Well, I've right? always been into cyberpunk, man. Any yeah. kind of cyberpunk. So that, it, to me, it just anything like that in that kind of realm does it for me. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I loved it. You loved it. Uh, I also bought a. Uh, Fooly Cooly, it was a thing for me because the first iteration of it, um, they did a really interesting thing with the um, soundscape on it. Uh, and, of course, Cowboy Bebop, I, I think a lot of people agree, is just a great story, good animation and everything else. Did You You had a, a couple other that you mentioned, Inuyasha. It's uh, another popular one. Yeah, Inuyasha, my wife loves that. Um, mm -hmm. I, like I said, I tolerate it pretty good because I've seen enough of it to kind of understand what's going on and i just fucking ask her I say, what the hell is going on and you know she clued me in so yeah. i feel like i have a little kinship with that she loved dragon ball z but inuasha was her favorite and so i was trying to say i i'd seen one on um toonami a few years ago i think it was on the second version of toonami when they revamped it and I have no idea what it was, but they were throwing out, you know, these sh some of these, it doesn't seem like they were 15 minutes long, which is, you know, famous Cartoon Network, I think is kind of famous for that kind of thing, especially with some of their live action stuff, having real short shows. Um, I just remember like the art style. That's what, that's what draws me to some of them more than others too. Uh, for instance, one of the best animes ever made was Thundercats, and I love it. Yeah. One of the other best animes ever made was Voltron, and I loved it as a kid. I'm not sure as a grown-up if it would still be as fun. I, I, I have seen Thundercats as a grown-up and, and still liked it. Um, kind of funny. Uh, I've been playing some Elder Scrolls Online recently, and yeah. just, just the other day in chat, we were talking about Thundercats, and uh, they were talking about, like... Uh, uh, didn't know the name for Mumra and all this other stuff. And I, I was like, I know all this stuff about it. And, but we were talking about it and He-Man. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, both of them uh, were pastime favorites for people of our age. But as far as uh, Thundercats go, 
it had a number of iterations. There were some that were better than others, but the very last one was just, ugh. I don't know if you remember it. It was kind of chibi, kind of not. Yeah, I, I saw a little bit of it. But the original one, if you go back and look, um, and He-Man wasn't far off from this either, but the, the I think it was just the, the Japanese art style. Of course, I, I'm sure He-Man was done by some Asians somewhere, Korean or whatever. But uh, it just had more. So in animation, you can't get a lot of details. It's too time-consuming to put the kind of details in that, that I really liked. Uh, right. I'm a kind of guy who likes a Todd McFarlane-type comic, the way it's drawn, or a Jim Lee. They go to extra lengths to give you all of the details and in, in, in everything. And uh, while it's not, you know, the Thundercats isn't that good, but if you look at it compared to just other superhero shows of the day, like the uh, Super Friends and stuff like that, and they look, you know, you can barely tell they have muscles. Like they have real, you know, John Romita style drawings. You know, they they barely look like superheroes. They barely have muscles. Right. But the Thundercats, you go and look at that animation, and it's got a lot of detail. Their muscles, you know, they there's just everything. There's just a ton of detail. And I think that's why so many of us had a crush on Chitara because she was one of the most well defined oh, yeah. uh, heroines fit. ever. Yeah, she was well fit. For a, well, a, not for just that, but I mean, like, I, I remember you could always see like her clavicle and like all yeah. this stuff on her neck. Right, she stuff had you well wouldn't see. Arms and legs. Yeah. Um, they have proper anatomy. I mean, like, yeah. it, it's just the best. I mean, like, really good detail. I, I, uh, I encourage all of you to YouTube it. And go look at some of that stuff and, and check it out. There was uh, not a lot of animation from back in the day that was that good. Yeah. The, um, Voltron. Voltron was kind of like a standard Japanese style to me in the in the early to mid eighties. Yeah, like, I mean, you all can the art Voltron was up with say, Robotech. They all had kind of Robotech. The same yeah, look. that's what I was gonna say. And yeah. like all all the others. Um... I can't remember the name of it. They redid it, but there was a space pirate one, mm -hmm. uh, kind of similar. Yeah, but uh, so yeah, yeah, it's always been about the details for me, man. How 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 something was just different. Because uh, I th I think as a kid, you don't even the story. You 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 know, maybe there are more discerning kids. I don't know, but to me, that's not really. It's all about the visual. I think. At least right. it was for me. Like I, I preferred to look in pictures in the magazines rather than read the articles. But I'm sure there's a lot of people that prefer to read rather than look at pictures. Well, I mean, there weren't a lot of really, you, you know, we mentioned Ghost in the Shell. That's probably one that could have a more something you could read into and, and get more involved in than exactly. just the art. Yeah. But, you know, all this other stuff, it was primarily about the art. You know, yeah. the stories were kind of the same general stories. Um, yeah, the characters were very vapid. Right. Yeah. Well, sorry to... Uh, do you know how old he was? Mr. Akira Toriyama? 68, I want to say. Only 68, really? Wow. Yeah. How young. Yeah. I mean, I mean, this day and age, that's young, man. People are living in the 90s easily all the time now. So, that's crazy. But uh, yeah, it's amazing that you got an episode with anime in it because not not a thing dear to my heart at all. Yeah, I just I guess it was, and it, you know it's interesting that I bring up that that I grew up on we we did we grew up on some great anime, but it wouldn't it's like not anime by today's standards. You know. Well, I mean, I remember I loved the hell out of the Dungeons and Dragons cartoon. Oh yeah. But Fantastic. it, it did anime. not have amazing animation. Yeah. It has some great artwork, uh, but the coloring and the animation were not top of the line, in my opinion. Yeah, no, it it, it was lacking, but it was still so cool to have a, D, a Dungeons & Dragons cartoon. It was really, right. really cool. Yeah. Um, and that's what we had. We had those sun, Saturday morning cartoons, and, and it, there man. was a slew of them. Yeah, and then you knew when Soul Train came on, it was all fucking over, baby. <laughs> right. Man, it was like, you'd be so excited, you'd be like, oh, man, this is the best cartoon ever. And the next thing you know, Soul Train, you know, like, 
Ah, pick up your bowl and your spoon, yeah. take it to the sink, go, <laughs> do, is over, man. go do whatever Time else. Go play outside now, man. Yeah. You know, and later on, as as we got just a couple years after that, you know, it was uh, after, after school cartoons because yeah. G.I. Joe and Transformers, those were after school, right? Right yeah. as you got home after school, man, three o'clock, boom, it was on. Um, those were some great cartoons, like the G.I. Joe stuff, the Transformers. And they were huge when we were kids. So big. That's uh, when we started getting exposed to the likes of Kevin Conrad and all these great voice actors that, yeah. you know, Autobots span generations. Roll out. Franchises. Yeah. <laughs> Love that guy. Autobots. Yeah, so rest in peace, Mr. Okira son. Sad to see you go. Yeah. So, uh, anything else you want to talk about? Uh, you got a couple of games listed on here, but yeah, no, I, I mentioned Elder stuff Scrolls down there because I have not been playing it. it up. It, yeah, I just I knew you had been playing it. Uh, that's just if I that's for my memory only. Okay. If I want to bring something up, nothing new to report, man. I, I'm not putting in major time on the game. It's just something that helps pass the time when yeah I, that was one i turned you on to because it was a freebie wanted. from epic i remember one yeah. i was like you need to check this out because i feel like this is your game speaking of freebies from epic uh oh, deus shit. ex mankind divided is free on there now if you yeah want. i need to go get it that's yeah. why i just oh shitted because i was like oh i didn't get game yesterday because i usually hit it on the day but um well it's also usually a wednesday i think and it was thursday this week since you did bring up your Elder Scrolls exploits. Um, but are you liking it all right? I mean, it's okay. Uh, it's kind of, I, I'm trying to go a free to play route and it's really difficult to do that. Oh, it's one of them. Yeah. Oh, um, fuck it. You basically have a, a limited, it, it's about your inventory space, is how they get you. Hmm. Um, saying them all, you, saying them all. If you pay for the month, well, not just that. So if you pay for a monthly access, you get a crafting bag, which means, you know, all the stuff that you craft with can go into this one bag and you don't have to worry about your inventory quite as much, right. but you also get access to DLC areas, mm. um, <clears throat> which I, I don't have either of those, but, uh, you know, I've done some crafting, I've done some, some other stuff, but, um, like with a lot of those types of on game on online games, it's really about your guild, your interaction with the guild, how they're set up, and yeah, yeah not much yeah. else I can say. About it doesn't sound interesting to me at all. But since you, it's not. It's just something to pass the time. Man. Yeah. <laughs> Interestingly enough, I had come across the game. Uh, what was it? The epoch? What was it called? The last epoch? epoch. The last epoch. Yeah. Yeah. And. I didn't even realize our friend Jay had posted something about it because I saw this game and I'm like, holy shit, this might be our Diablo replacement. And then yeah. like, as soon as I found it and saw it, then I was going through discord. It was either that day or the next day, right after I saw where he had posted all that stuff about, about it. And I'm like, that's so fucking funny that you bring us up. Cause I was going to bring it up on the podcast. I forgot to blah, blah, blah. And honestly, from what I understand, it is, a, it is a Diablo four killer. Like it's, is apparently or got a pretty good uh, rating and people like it. So I'm kind of well, highly we'll interested to check it out, man. Like, uh, yeah. I don't know if our friend Jay is, uh, have, has purchased it and messing with it at all. If he's even looked into it, but I, I'd be interested to see because I've been kind of looking for something like that. We've talked off air, you and I about, I do miss us kind of getting together and, you know, having some time in a, in a game where we can all just kind of work on the same thing. Yeah. But after the Diablo, what was it? What was that last Diablo called that we were playing? Uh, Immortal. Immortal. Yeah. After that debacle, because we figured out real quick where this shit was going and we didn't, you, even you know, his wife before. is still playing that. Yeah. Still, you told me still yeah. has like a full account of characters. That's crazy, dude. Like, yeah. Man, we grinded and grinded, and I was just like, we're going nowhere. Yeah. Nowhere, nowhere, nowhere. Fast. <laughs> Very fast. Like, there's an ending to you. I guess there's an ending to Diablo 4, right? I assume there is. 
Well, I mean, that's the thing. There was an ending, and then they updated, and then there was a new ending, and that that was kind of the thing that would keep yeah. updating. There'd be right. a new end. See, that's not, I'm not down with that, because Diablo 2, you have a definitive end. I assume Diablo 3, you have a definitive end. I don't know, because I've never played Diablo 3. Yeah. My, I, I hate that I've never played Diablo 3, honestly. I wanted to for years. I mean, it just never was in the cards, you know, for whatever reason. I've never well, had I access mean, to it. Yeah, if you talk to Jay about it, you know, Diablo 3, the ending didn't matter because once you got to the end, you were just recycling all these dungeons to get better gear, to get higher quality. Yeah. I mean, I guess in a sense, you do the same thing in 1 and 2, but because you just go, you know, like in 1, you got what? Hell Dungeons, the the biggest, but there's only three, right? There's only three yeah. levels in number one. What was it? What was it? It was something Nightmare in Hell. Is it normal? Normal nightmare, yeah, it might have been normal nightmare in hell. I can't remember. Yeah, and two, so I guess two for me is the pinnacle. Like that was the last one I played for real, other Same. than the Inferno or whatever you called it. Immortal. Immortal. <laughs> I don't know why I want to come. I guess I just <laughs> made a new game for him, Diablo Inferno. <laughs> that would be a good name, honestly. Yeah. I don't know. I I'm with you on the idea of like playing games with friends because uh, I don't think we've ever brought it up on the channel. Maybe we have. There's no more third spaces. There's, there's nowhere to hang out. Mm -hmm. For me, I'm I'm a recovered alcoholic, so I can't really go to bars to hang out anymore. I, I hate drink when I was doing it. Yeah, I quit. Um, nobody's going to church. I I don't want to hang out with church people generally. Yeah, <laughs> you know if if you go to church and that's you know a, a thing of your identity you keep to the side, that's fine. I, I can deal with that. But you sure. know it seems like right now so many of them are like this is who we are. Yeah. A little offsetting um but yeah we we don't have places to hang out anymore and i was kind of thinking like there there was one thought and it's escaped me uh, i almost had it a second ago but there was like somewhere you can do a third place but you kind of have to be obstinate about it <laughs> um and i'm trying to remember where it is but if i think of it i'll I'll bring it up next time. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's like, for me, man, it's like, I, I, I think I talked about it in the last podcast. You know, I'm just not willing to, I mean, I, I, I am willing to, but I try not to. Like, I don't want to drag my wife into a situation where she might just be totally bored shitless. Right. You know, because half the time we'll just be like, she's like, I'm going to go visit my sister. I'm like, cool. Right on. That would probably be my time to go visit somebody. But, I don't, I just stay at home and whatever. And, uh, you know, I'm sure I can make plans with other people. I just, I just never do it. And so the closest thing, and we had this, like when, when we were all playing Diablo Immortal, I mean, we were all four online talking to each other, you know, and it didn't matter. We could flick on cameras if we wanted to, but it didn't matter. We didn't see each other. Right. Um, it was still like being in the same room because half the time we're our backs to each other and we're looking at a screen anyways. We're not even looking right. at each other, you know, but. Well, you're not alone in that, though, is what I'm saying. Like, I think most people are not going out and hanging out with people when they have the opportunity to. Yeah. Um, and it's just like, I, I think we got used to it over the pandemic, right? It's just like. Possibly. Spend all your time alone. Yes. Yeah, it's, you know, it's causing problems, obviously, but. It's so easy, right? Yeah, that pandemic wasn't shit for us. We had no adjustment whatsoever, dude. Like, <laughs> right. zero adjustment. It was perfect, you know? And a lot of people were just, like, whining about their lives and shit. And I'm like, bro, nothing's fucking changed for me at all. I mean, I still went to the store, in the grocery store, got my food and shit. Uh, but we, it was, we were already quarantined. Yeah. You know, essentially, you go to work, you come home. You go to work, you come home. You make sure you got food when you're hungry and your weed. <laughs> got your weed. <laughs> but yeah, so I, I would be very interested to check out that game um, and see what's doing. Cause it, I mean, essentially it's that style of game. It's the old Baldur's Gate Diablo style of game. So I don't know how much it costs, but I don't think it's super expensive because I want to say it well, check it out. an indie game. And let I'm, us know, man. It might be AAA, but I think it might be an indie game. Yeah. 
But anyway, yeah, maybe I'll have some to report. Who knows? Because we need to we need to be social somehow, man. Something more sociable for sure. So we got a small group of friends. It's not like it has to be a massive party. But anyway, man, that's about it for me. That that's all you? I got, man. All righty then. Well. Thank you guys so much, as always, for joining us this week. We always look forward to having you here with us. You guys are the rock that keeps us anchored to this earth. Thank you so much. And as always, please remember, be excellent to each other. Brian and I will see you on the flip side, man. Right on, right on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thanks, everybody. Peace out. Yeah.